So I did find out that Lisa Ray's mom name is Katie McCoy and it says that she was a professional model. Hi, welcome back to True One True's YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today I want to discuss Beyond Love Fix My Life with Lisa Ray McCoy and her mom and her daughter. So we had the queen mother, the queen, and the princess. I took some notes on here. So I thought this was one of the best episodes ever on Beyond Fix My Life. And also I would like to note that I was in the audience so many years ago of Oprah Winfrey show for the first season of Eonla Fix My Life. And that first season was when Evelyn from Basketball Wives uh, appeared on that show. Um, I thought this was one of the best episodes ever because it was so relatable. Not that a lot of others weren't, but this and the mother-daughter dynamic and how it really in true life form plays out that um, it's a struggle in a lot of relationships, even though there are plenty mother-daughter relationships that are awesome. It wasn't my case. Um, I've never had a real close relationship with my mom and I've always wanted it, but I, it just never was. Um, so here, Queen Mother, she was angry. And I think she was angry about the life she lost, the time she had with her ex-husband who was philandering around with this woman, that woman, this woman, and some more. She stated it herself. Uh, he had maybe five or six women at a time. And yeah, she knew about it. And she stayed with them because of the money and or whatever other reason she stayed. And she also, I don't want to use the word despise, but I'm going to say despise. She despises the fact that her daughter have this love for her father because he spoiled her. In a lot of relationships, it's mommies, the sons are with the moms. And then it's daddy's girls and mama's boys. You know what I mean? In a lot of cases, not all, but in a lot of cases. And clearly, Lisa Ray was a daddy's girl. I pride myself on that as well. Um, so, her mom was still real angry, even to this day, or that day, whenever they filmed, that queen, that the queen, still holds her dad in high regard and she doesn't hold her and she doesn't want to be her. <laughs> That's nothing new either because a lot of times mom and daughter dynamics, a daughter will grow up and it's like, I don't want to be like her. I don't want to be like my mom. And that seems to be the case here. So I may be bouncing back and forth because my notes and my mind is all over the place so when <laughs> they were all sitting together and they were talking Iyala asked a question and the queen mother she just stated to me it was out of no, nowhere that somebody need to tell the truth because we came here to tell the truth blah 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 she just snapped off and I was like, what happened? Like, did they edit something out there? <laughs> because she started going off. If, if, if everybody told the truth, blah, blah. And Iyana is like, queen mother, queen mother, queen mother. Like, and she took the queen and the princess out of the room to work on one project while she talked to the queen mother. Hmm. Well, she said, oh, okay, so then another thing when the queen, which is Lisa Ray, stated that they all three live together at her house under one roof. Three grown women living in one house. I can see that being uh, a disaster <laughs> because 
everybody's grown, everybody's wanting to be in charge. Even though it's Lisa Ray's house, the queen's house, she's paying the bills, but the queen mother is queen mother, right? So I can't imagine, I can't imagine. Um, oh my goodness, I don't say so many things, but I'm always concerned about how I make others feel. But I also feel like others don't care about how I feel at all in situations. But I'm just going to say this. The three of them together under one roof, I can imagine um, the chaos. Because when I moved back home in 2013 to Chicago, I lasted in the house with my mom about a month and a half and I had to go. And that's just what it is. I had to go. I couldn't. I couldn't be there. Okay. And so, a thing that I kind of picked up on, how about you? Elisa Rice she said she was full. Her dad pretty much catered to her. She got what she wanted. They were serving chicken wings at school. If she wanted pizza, she can call her dad and be like, Dad, they're serving wings. I want pizza. And the dad said, say no more. He brought her what she wanted. She was full and she got what she wanted. And when her daughter said, um, well, pretty much what her daughter said, what, what the princess said is, well, she want the money like her mom. She don't want to have to work like her mom to get it. That's what I got from it. So from those sayings and interactions on the show, I thought to myself, hmm, Lisa Ray is spoiling her daughter like her dad spoiled her. Her dad had the money and whatever she wanted, she can call her dad up and she can get it. And Lisa Ray now has the money. So it's like she's taking over the reins from her dad. So she's passing down to her daughter or doing for her daughter what her dad did to her or for her, which is good and bad because Lisa Ray, she had a go get it, go get it mentality after her dad was murdered. And Lisa Ray herself on the show said that her daughter is lazy. So her daughter, yeah, ma, take care of me, provide for me, but she don't wanna go to work or she don't wanna work like her mom to get the money, but she wants the money. So what do you guys think about that? I find that uh, relatable in that, well, well, Lisa didn't go to her mom. Lisa Ray didn't go to her mom. Maybe she went to her dad. When I was in need, after I got out on my own, um, if I ever needed anything, I went to my dad because I knew he would be there. He would provide it for me. I can get it. And we weren't nowhere near in the situation that the McCoys were in. But my daddy's girl. Um, and if I needed it, I could go to him and I knew I can get it. Uh, but the, the difference is with me, I didn't go to him unless I needed because once I was out on my own, I felt like I needed to maintain on my own. And 98% of the time, 98, 99% of the time I did, but there were times when I was in need and I knew who I can go to to get things taken care of financially when it was necessary. Couldn't go to mom. Mom didn't have it like that, but I can go definitely go to my dad. Um, <laughs> I found it so funny when Lisa Rice uh, said that her daughter's not grown because she ain't grown. I had to rewind the tape. Like, how old do they say her daughter is? Her daughter is 30 years old, and you're saying she's not grown? OMG. If you're not grown at 30, um, when are you considered to be grown? And hearing that made me just think about some stuff that I recently discovered about myself, and that how we as parents, and I'm not going to say parents, I'm going to say as mothers, try to or do parent our adult children. So I was watching a show recently, maybe a month or so ago, where uh, it was like a live Q&A and somebody asked 
the parents something. Okay, the show was Black Love. I love that show. If you haven't watched it, it's on Oprah Winf Winfrey's network, Black Love. You can find a lot of the um, episodes on YouTube. Pull it up. They're talking about marriage, relationships, and relationships, as we know, it's not just between a man and a woman. It can be friendships. It can be siblings, um, parents, and child. So anyway, this one was asked some question and she said that she was not into parenting her adult children and that kind of like slapped me upside the head because I realized that over the years that's exactly what I do I insert myself in their lives where maybe I shouldn't I'm still trying to parent and that's over with or at least it should be right there adults let them figure it out sink or swim make it make it way you know and then I'll be there when and if needed um, so I'm working on that backing off and staying away because yeah we parent our children and once they're adults hey uh, cut the strings and let them go fly figure it out like we had to right so i feel like that's exactly what lisa ray the queen is doing parenting her adult child she don't want her to move out how can you tell her she cannot move out she's 30 years old um i thought that was interesting and it is something notably that i have done and have uh come to grips with and am moving away from so before I go on about the show I just wanted to I did a little research because I am here from Chicago born and raised um, but I'm from the west side that's 60644 that the bride sang about in her song and from what I've gathered from the most recent research that I have done they are from the south side so when I was a younger I never ventured off to the South Side, maybe once or twice in high school uh, with some friends. But for the most part, I was born and raised on the West Side, and that's where I stayed. So all of this stuff isn't something I grew up hearing about, knowing about, or even paid any attention to. But since this episode, I did a little bit of research, and this is what I found out. So we all know by now that Lisa Ray and the Brett are half sisters. I knew that. I knew that much. And I knew that they share a dad, that they had different moms. Right? So let's be clear on that. I didn't know that much. <laughs> so uh, their dad is David Ray McCoy. So Lisa Ray, Ray was named for her dad. David Ray McCoy is their father. Um, and that um, he was found dead in the backseat of his Cadillac on November the 12th, 1988, on the south side of Chicago in an alley. He was 52 years old, and his then-girlfriend, she was 32 years old, her name, Sheila Daniels, and her 20-year-old brother, they were both convicted of the murder. She was sentenced to 80 years, and he, her brother, was sentenced to 60 years. It says that he, David Ray McCoy, also has three other daughters, and they are Jalan, or Jalan, J-E-H-L-A-N, Morgan, and Cynthia. So Lisa Ray and the Brat has three other sisters. Now, I don't know how their relationships are. I know that the brat and uh, the queen, Lisa Ray, I know that they have a relationship and it seems fairly uh, close, decent, but I'm not sure about Jalan, Morgan, and Cynthia because this is actually my first time knowing about them. Never thought to do any research on this. It wasn't a thing to me. Um, so it is rumored, there were two rumors of why they murdered him. One rumor was that she killed him because he was going to cut her from his will. And then another rumor is that she killed him over an argument that they had over an electric bill. 
that really don't make any sense to me. And it doesn't make any sense to me because in the article that I read on the Chicago Tribune, so all of this that I am telling you is Googleable. Google is your friend. So, and because it's public knowledge or it's out there, I think it's okay that I speak on it. So the article says that he was a millionaire, a self-made millionaire to be exact. Um, so arguing and killing someone over an electric bill does not make sense. Um, if you, especially if you're a millionaire, why are you even arguing over electric bill? How high could it have been? So the reports of him maybe removing, taking her off the wheel makes more sense, right? So another uh, article that I found, it say, states that because um, the first one that I read, it didn't say how he made his millions. Um, so I dug a little bit deeper and it says that he owned some motels and some nightclubs on the south side of Chicago uh, around Stony Island Avenue. And another uh, worthy note is that the girlfriend, uh, she filed an appeal because she wanted to be let out of prison. She filed, so he was killed in 88 and in the 90s, I think in 97, she, she got an appeal, went to court for it and that she was found guilty a second time of the same crime and sentenced to the same sentence. I'm going to go back to some more on David Ray in a, a minute because I, I found some more stuff here. But when Ayanna was talking to Queen Mother, it was just the two of them. And the Queen Mother stated that her husband beat her with hangers. She was beat daily. And she stayed with him because she wanted her daughter to be better or something like that. I didn't understand that because how... Are you staying in a relationship where you are beat daily, beat with hangers or whatever? How is that going to make your daughter better? Somebody help me with that. Help me, somebody. That part, I just, I don't get that and I don't understand it. Um, so I'm going to go back to David Ray McCoy. Um, something that I found here. It's a lot of uh, commentary, so... I guess some of these people, they knew Lisa Ray back in the day. Um, and this was on Lipstick Alley. It's a very old article, I think from 2012. So anyway, um, I'm just going to read this to you. And I'm just starting at a certain point. So what I found here is it says that, uh, yeah, McCoy, 52, had a reputation of being a t being tough in his business dealings. This was from a commander of the Pullman Area Violent Crimes Unit. Uh, Philip Klein was his name. So they found him in the backseat of his Cadillac. They said he was shot three times in the head. He was shot in the front seat and then his body was moved to the back seat. An autopsy disclosed that McCoy was um, he, it was a Saturday evening, so it was on the weekend, and they found his wallet near a fast food restaurant around 87th Street in Blackstone, but there was no money in the wallet, even though he routinely carried about $1,000 on him. Um, but they don't think it was a, a robbery. They didn't think it was a robbery, was a motive. Uh, for the crime and they said oh, still didn't they didn't think that was a motive and they also his gun was missing that they said that he carried uh, a 38 on him so what I found is it stated that David Ray McCoy was paraplegic and they it states in this article that he was shot in 1968, and that left him paralyzed. Um, and that he did most of his dealings from the front seat of his car because he couldn't transfer himself on his own. 
places. So here it is. It says, police said that McCoy was a paraplegic as of a result of a gunshot wound he suffered in 1968 when three bandits invaded his sister's apartment. According to Klein, McCoy typically, typically conducted business in the front seat of his Cadillac because he was unable to move from, from his car to an office on his own. They said that he was a very astute businessman and um, I just lost my spot. He was a very astute businessman who had lent millions of dollars to other uh, area businesses. McCoy, they said he was, and I am familiar with this, these motels or I've heard of them. I'll say that, not familiar, but yeah, I've heard of them throughout Chicago. It says that McCoy was an owner of Zanzibar Motels. He had one at 8101 South uh, Stony Island Avenue, 5040 South Martin Luther King, 1008 East 73rd, 453 East Persian, 3001 West Jackson. Maybe that one because that's on the west side. The 3001 West Jackson is on the west side of Chicago. So that's probably where I became familiar with it. Maybe riding by on the 126, which is a, the Jackson Street bus, public transportation. Um, and it says McCoy's brother Julius managed several of the motels. According to state records, McCoy was president or a corporate officer of a firm called Downtown Adjusting Services. He also was the president of Chicago's Dooms Motel, Inc., which operates a large motel on 94th and Stony Island. And a couple of more. It's a lot. So a lot of people, a lot of the comments in this article on Lipstick Alley, they were stating that her father was a D-boy. D-boy. Hustle. They say he used to hustle. And a lot of them saying, well, he wasn't no millionaire. And they were saying that. <laughs> so it was a lot of rumors going around back then. So they said somebody stated that. Oh, Lisa Ray. Oh, maybe this was a comment from her. Somebody was stating that Lisa Ray was a hood rat. She slept around with a lot of D-boys and her baby daddy had a little bit of money, but he wasn't no millionaire. And it was stating here that um, something about her saying she was a millionaireess and People didn't believe it or don't believe it or whatever the case may be. But I just noticed this one comment here. It says Lisa Ray Missick, which is in red. It's supposedly a comment from her stating, I'm not a hood rat. I actually grew up in a very rich family. So... Well, one of the comments were here, OT a little. I don't know what that was, but it says a millionaire was arguing over a high electric bill. A 32-year-old argued with a 52-year-old paraplegic over who would rake leaves, and it led to someone being murdered. How sad. WTH, like, what the hell? This other comment, ooh, this comment here is from October the 15th, 2008. And wow, I just noticed this name. It says Cardi B. That's the name. This is from 2008, way before the Cardi B we know now. That's, you know, with offset. <laughs> I doubt if this is her. But it's October 15, 2008 on Lipstick Valley. Cardi, C-A-R-D-I-I-B. It says, their comment states that her daddy was a D-boy and a pimp. From my recollection, they lived over in South Shore for the longest. It was a nice area back then, but not but not the neighborhood for people with millionaire money. 
If Lisa inherited millions, she wouldn't have slept with every thug D-boy in Chicago years ago. Her baby daddy had some money, but nowhere near millions. Not my comment. It's right here on Lipstick, Lipstick Alley. So these people are talking as if they knew her or knew of her. So if you want to check that out, everything that I stated here is Googleable. Um, Chicago Tribune, but just Google uh, Lisa Ray McCoy's dad, or his name again is David Ray McCoy. And the episode, again, I thought it was fantastic. What did you think? I know I left a lot of things out, like the princess having been sent away to a disciplinary school. She didn't like it. I thought it was funny when um, Yala asked her if she missed her mom. Like, was that a part of? And she was like, no. Like, no, I can't say that I did. Hey, she was honest. And it bees like that. Sometimes that's just the type of relationship you have. You love them because they're your mom, but you don't have to like them. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's so true for so many. Um, I did like when Iyanla pointed out to Queen Mother, Lisa Ray's mom, uh, you can't hold your daughter accountable for the relationship you had with your ex-husband because she didn't experience the relationship that you had with your ex-husband. She had her relationship with her dad, and that's just what it is. So don't be mad at your daughter's moms because they're daddy's girls. They, we love our dads, right? Um, it doesn't mean that we don't love you. We do, but we love our dads, and there's just nothing wrong with that. Um, the mother... I didn't really pull up any information on her because we saw her there. She sang angry. She sang maybe jealous of the relationship that her daughter had with her dad, which was her husband. She seems like snobbish. Uh, she admitted that maybe she stayed because of the money. Money plays a big part of why a lot of women stay in relationships that they probably should have left a long time ago or maybe never should have even entered um so give me your thoughts and opinions and i've watched this episode maybe four times just because i found it so interesting and i'm pretty sure several people will have commentary on it uh videos i mean and I would be interested in an update in six months, like Lisa Ray said. Uh, from my understanding, there's one more season after this one, so it's possible. And I got that via a tweet um, because I was, I've been always wondering if uh, Iyanla can fix my life. <laughs> but I would, I would be too scared to go on there, maybe. I wouldn't personally, I don't care. I would go, but others, maybe not so much. Alrighty, thank you for watching. Leave your comments, like, subscribe, and do share. And I appreciate you. Be safe. COVID is real.